Welcome back to East Cork for season two of the Ballycotton Sessions, where for the next eight weeks we'll showcase the very best of Irish music here in the intimate surrounds of Sea Church Ballycotton. Kicking off the season, we have world renowned rock band The Water Boys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming all this way if you've come a long distance, as I know some of you have. We don't have very long, so we're going to just pack it with music as much as we can. Here we go.
I got to sit down with music legend Mike Scott to talk about his music and what inspires him. Mike Scott, welcome to Bally Cotton. Thank you, Louise. How are you? I'm very, very well. Good. You uh, mentioned before that you once had a dream to visit all the towns of Ireland, and your career uh, in the Water Boys has led you to some of the biggest stages in the world and yeah. some of the smallest towns. Was Bally Cotton yeah. a stop before? No, I've never been to Ballycotton before. I don't really know this part of Ireland, East Cork. Yeah. I don't really know it around here. The nearest I would have come would be Cork City or Kinsale. Mm -hmm. And now you'll keep coming yeah. back. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and what about, you know, you, you have a, a well-documented love affair with Ireland, yeah. you know, going back decades. Yeah. What is it about Ireland that draws you to it and, and the, the history of our music and the space? What, what, does it, what does it give you? I came here when I was 11 years old on a summer holiday with my mum. Yeah. And we, we actually stayed in Kinsale and then we went up to Sligo for a week. And I, I remember feeling that... that because it was the same language as, as Britain, mm -hmm. so so it kind of felt like like I, I was at home, mm -hmm. but it, there was a difference, and I, I couldn't figure out what the difference was, but but I, all I knew was that it was magical. Yeah. I, I realise now it's the, the non-industrialised west of Ireland mm. cast a spell on me, even at that early early age. So it was always something you were going to come back to? Yeah, when I first came back here touring in the, in the mid-80s, I, I fell in love with the place, mm -hmm. yeah. And it gave us Fisherman's Blues. Yep. And Spittle. Yep. Can we talk about Fisherman's Blues? Yeah. Yeah. So, so 1988, you headed to Spittle. Tell me what happened yeah. in that studio. I know Fisherman's Blues was recorded before Spittle. Right. Pre-Spittle. Pre-Spittle days. Yeah, recorded in Windmill Lane, in the old Windmill, the original okay. Windmill Lane, the real Windmill Lane, in January 1986. I had just come over to Ireland to stay for a few weeks. Okay. I didn't yet know I was going to stay for six years. Yeah. And then come back and live here. Uh, and Fisherman Blues was a lyric that I'd written on, a, on an envelope while we were on tour. Mm -hmm. And I brought it out in the studio and thought, I wonder if I've got some chords for this. And started to strum it. And it came together super fast. Yeah. Band all made up their parts on the spot. That's great. Yeah, and it was, it was the first number we'd, we'd done in that kind of... Uh, to me, it's a rock and roll song, but its rhythm is country rock. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time we'd, we'd worked in that vein. Uh, and I remember playing it back thinking, what is this? It's not like Waterboys music, what is it? And of course, when, when it came out, that's how the fans felt about it yeah. too. What is this? I wish I was a fisherman Tall on the seas Right away from twilight And it's bitter memory
Can I ask you about covers? Because there's covers. been yes, yeah. so like there's some some big names have have covered your tracks. Yeah. Um, Steve Earle, Rod Stewart. Ellie Goulding does a lovely version of How Long Will I Love yes. You. How does it feel for you when somebody takes your music and makes it their own? Mm, that's, that's what I like them to do. Okay. If they copy the Waterboys version or sing it too much like me, it, it's flattering, but it's not particularly interesting exactly, to me. Yeah. I like when it gets transformed and I hear something done with my song that I couldn't have imagined myself. Okay, well, have yeah. you a favourite cover of one of your songs? Mm. Uh, Prince's version of The Whole of the Moon. Right. Which is, he, he turned it into a funk drum and bass, Black Lives Matter anthem. And I do wonder, you know, when, when you started out, they, Bob Dylan, David Bowie, Patti Smith, you've cited them as influences mm. for you. Now you influence so many, and the Waterboys influence so many, you know, newer musicians. Who, influ who influences you now, or are you influenced? So you know, my nine-year-old daughter loves Taylor, Taylor Swift. Ah, but there we have it. Taylor yeah. Swift influences you. <laughs> yeah, and, and I bought her Taylor's two recent double albums, the, yeah. the, the more Americana-sounding double albums, Evermore and Brilliant. Folklore. And we've played those just over and over and over. And, and she loves them, but man, they, they really turned me on as well. That's fantastic. And I've picked up so many tips listening to Taylor Swift. She's a great songwriter. She's a brilliant, brilliant songwriter. Yeah. Um, so would you say your, your daughter influences you too? She did, yeah, by doing that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And is she into music? She's mad about music. She, not in a formal way yet. She's yeah. not wanting to learn an instrument or anything, but she's singing all the time. And she's a really good vocalist. I, I can hear her. She's a, she's a style, she's chibi styling, as they say. Black hat, black kitten. Yeah. And, you know, a fan of WB8. And yeah. tell me about the Lake Isle of Inish Free, then, your version of that. Well, you know, we did an album called An Appointment with Mr. Yates. Yes. It came out, I think, in 2011. And it was uh, our musical uh, adaptations of Yeats's poems, turning them into songs. There were 14 tracks in the album. And one of them was Lake Isle of Inish Free. I really wanted to get that poem. I really wanted to free it from its, its shortbread box yes. past and do something different with it. And it struck me that the, the opening lyric, I will arise and go now, it's not a million miles from woke up this morning. <laughs> so I turned it into a blues. Yeah. And that's the way we play it, a blues. So I like... And it's even got the mention of a hive for the honeybee. You know, Muddy Waters, he would have this song about I'm, I'm King Bee buzzing around your hive. So, you know, Yeats, he was on to that. He was, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. How it all came together. Yeah. I will arise and go now and go to Inish Free. Nine bean rows will I have there and a hive for the honeybee and a small cabin of clay and wattles made. And I will live alone in the bee. Out and I will have some peace there for peace. 
Christ comes dropping slow Where midnight's all a glimmer And noon's a purple glow Dropping from the veils of morning To where the cricket sings And the even fool
I spoke about wings. You just flew. I wondered, I guess, and I tried. and tears, trumpets, towers, tenements, wide oceans full of tears, bags, bags, fables, scimitars and stars, every precious dream of vision underneath the stars, you climb on the ladder with the wind in your sails, you can't let the comet blaze in your trail. Thanks to the Water Boys for giving us an amazing performance and join us next week for Moncrief. Hi, we're Kudos and welcome to Season 2 of Ballycotton Sessions Behind the Scenes. In this week's episode, we'll be meeting the Water Boys. Here she comes in her sweater and gloves. And a boho skirt, the woman I love, Blackberry Girl, Blackberry Girl. The way she moved, the way that she talked, I'm a hunter that got woke and caught by Blackberry Girl, Blackberry Girl. She flipped the dude with the surfer's neck, told him, I don't think so. Thank you for being here at Sea Church with us and what an incredible performance. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like great. <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> you put on some performance. <laughs> Thank Brilliant. you. I'm just glad they have suit after the show. <laughs> the energy that went into it was incredible. Yeah. Have you had the chance to explore body talking? I have not, but I already feel like family. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Brother Paul. Brother <laughs> Paul made me feel like family. <laughs> so what's it like being a part of the Water Boys? 
It's amazing because I get to incorporate all the rock and soul, especially the Memphis soul where I came from, and, and I, they just welcome it. So I just pour my soul out. That's amazing. We we felt it <laughs> all over the room. <laughs> They've written a song about you. Isn't that crazy? How does that make you feel? It's weird. <laughs> it's funny when you know, like he explains how the song went down, and it's you know, it's like it always kind of gets me. You know. <laughs> Did it actually happen that way? It did really did happen that way, yeah. <laughs> and do you have any pre or post rituals after a gig, before a gig, anything that you need to do to calm down or to keep the vibe going? I have, well, for me, um, water, hydrate, and I have uh, lemon ginger tea. And then after the show, I do soup just to replenish the energy, and it's great. And then I'm good, I'm good. Very yeah. wholesome. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely to hear it. Lovely to meet you. I'm happy you're here in Bali. Oh, Pop. it's so it's great to meet you. Y'all are rocking show. those dresses. Oh, I want to see on camera. <laughs> We had a great time getting to meet with the Water Boys this week. Make sure to tune in to RT2 to catch the full performance.